Hello everyone, it's time for another installment of Myth of Svevak. Today the game I'm gonna review is... You know what? I don't need to wear the Sonic hat for this game because it doesn't deserve to be worn. It's Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis, yes, isn't the name confusing? This is an actual Game Boy Advance cartridge as you can tell, but it's called Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis. But you know what's really fascinating about this game? This right here was supposed to commemorate Sonic's 15th anniversary. So you celebrate his birthday by playing this and by playing Sonic 06. But let me tell you something about Sonic Genesis here, or should I say Sonic for the GBA. This thing makes Sonic 06 look like The Last of Us. It makes it look like Uncharted 2. It makes it look like enter your favorite game right here because this is that bad. I would rather play Sonic 06 I can play it 100% over playing this any time of the day. So why is it so bad you ask? Well, you probably already know because you've probably seen many reviews of this game at this point. So I'll try my best to not whine so much and yell curse or just to explain how angry I am with this game, but I will let you know all the reasons why I think this is probably the worst port of all time. So let's get started! <laughs> I always start playing this game and they give me a health screen. It's like the developers knew the game was really that awful and they're telling me like, you gotta become sick, you should not do this, but... You still press A and move on. I'm sorry guys, but I appreciate the kind gesture. That's how the intro music sounds like. Oh god. Even the menu screen of this game gives me aneurysm, especially the anniversary mode that all it does is give you the ability to use a spin dash. Not only that I think that this should have been just a regular option in the menu instead of giving it an entire mode, but that gives gamers the false so hope they're gonna get something really cool out of this, but nope, just a spin dash. And that's why I was really disappointed, because it says anniversary mode, so you think there's gonna be some cool stuff like new levels or the ability of playing as Tails and Knuckles in Sonic 1. Can you imagine how cool would that be? Ah, <sighs> that would be super cool. So what is the option menu you have in it anyways? Huh. You can only turn off the sounds. And ironically, that's a plus. So for this review, I'm gonna give you the exact reasons why I think this game sucks. Reason number one, screen crop. You know what was great about the original Sonic the Hedgehog? The fact that no matter how fast you were going, you can always react to oncoming danger since the screen gives you enough space that you can react to. In this version, you don't get any space whatsoever. That is a huge problem because that means that more than often, you will lose your rings to something you cannot see on the screen and you cannot react to on time. I remember getting stuck especially on the final scrap rain zone act on the final obstacle because I could not see where the chain balls would spin to, so I fall down over and over and over again. Maybe the reason why the screen is so focused on Sonic is because they want to give him the most spotlight. I mean, who cares about the background and all those obstacles you need to avoid? It's all about Sonic. In fact, let's help them a minute more. Let's give more focus on Sonic so I can see less of the background. Maybe we should play the game that way instead. But I know what you're thinking. What about games like Super Mario Bros. Deluxe and Sonic 1 for the Game Gear? Both those games have reduced screen ratio compared to the original console versions, and yet it wasn't that big of a problem, so why? In Mario, the character's movement isn't nearly as fast as Sonic, and you have plenty of time to react to dangers. As for Sonic 1 for the Game Gear, it's not as cropped from the Master System as the Game Boy Advance version is from the Genesis. Also, those two games are better. It makes boss encounters like the Labyrinth Zone 1 painfully hard because you cannot see half of the obstacles because they are off screen. Also, the final boss of the game poses a really big problem with the upper pistons cannot be seen because of the screen crop. So what I had to do is pretty much stick to the right side of the level and unwillingly wait until Eggman is gonna pop close to me and get a hit. If it actually happens. But enough about that, let's just move on. Reason number two. Physics. Remember when I was blabbering about Yuji Naka's talent of programming precise formula of speed? Yeah, it's thrown out of the window here. The momentum in this game is poorly handled. 
Sometimes when you run, you feel as Sonic is being whisked by the wind, and you can't stop him at all even if you press the opposite direction on the D-pad. Also get this, in this part of Labyrinth Zone, about 95% of the time, you're gonna lose rings. You cannot avoid those spikes. Excellent design choice, fellas! But it gets even more annoying than this. Do you remember the part in Starlight Zone when you have this bomb on the sea so you have to jump on the other end of to make it bounce over and over again so you get momentum and you can get all the way up? Well, in this game, it doesn't work. You have to pray, pretty much, that you will carry the momentum and you will be able to go up. And I spent minutes, and I want to repeat this, minutes just trying to get all the way up there. And this is the second shortest level in the whole game, mind you. So, to make the game even look worse than what it is, it makes the physics of Sonic 4 Episode 1 look better. Enough said. Reason number three. Glitches. I have no idea why Sega didn't playtest this thing, but this game is just fraught with glitches and instant kills. I already mentioned the spikes in Labyrinth Zone, but there are also moments in Starlight when you go on those collapsing platforms and you get sucked in the gap and you die? How does that even make sense to begin with? There are also many cases in the game when objects appear and disappear out of nowhere, there are plenty of draw distance issues, and even... Enemy respawn? What is this, Mega Man? Oh, and getting all the Chaos Emeralds? Good luck with that. The controls in this stage are so finicky and unresponsive, especially when you jump, because you can only jump straight. So, doing all those open stages uh, is completely impossible because you cannot control yourself very well. And no, I didn't collect all the emeralds in this game and I don't want to bother with it. Does that make me any less of a gamer? I think it makes me less of a gamer for actually playing this game! Oh, you think I'm done? Oh, I have more. Reason number four. The Now, I know the GBA isn't known for its hardware prowess, but I'm pretty sure I've seen game run on 60 frames per second before, like Pokemon Ruby and... Gee, I don't know, THE SONIC ADVANCE SERIES! Why am I playing this instead again? You can tell the slowdowns are really bad when the text is slower than the original Genesis version! Are you kidding me? It's just freaking text! And the game runs for about 20 frames per second when it starts, but then it gets much worse. <sighs> I hate bringing up Labyrinth Zone every time I'm trying to prove a point. But because this game must render not only the level itself, but also the water physics as well, the game doesn't crawl, it stagnates. Even the timer moves 4 seconds slower than it should. The slowdown, as you can tell, is very bad, but especially in Labyrinth and Scrap Brain, I swear I want to castrate myself for how excruciatingly droning it was! Especially when you have to leave your invincibility shield on, oh god! The game also have to render all the freaking sparkles when that happens, so it chucks even more! And that is probably the biggest reason why I cannot stand this game. After only playing it for 30 minutes, mind you, I could not play it any longer because I became so tired and exhausted, and my mind literally hurt. I felt pain by playing Sonic the Hedgehog on the GBA. Let me- I got pain! If a game makes you feel ill, if you feel physically weak after playing a video game, let's put it this way, the score's not gonna be very high. Number five is alive, the problem bosses. Well, you think they're all cheap because of the Labyrinth Zone boss, but the end result is actually the opposite. The following footage depicts me playing the first boss of the game. This is pathetic. I can't believe how they managed to ruin an iconic boss by making him practically non-existent. The Spring Yard boss and the Starlight Zone bosses are exactly the same, since you can just jump and hit Robotnik, ruining any kind of strategy. Dear Lord, you don't even need to see saws in the Starlight Zone boss, just stand on the middle of them, jump at him, and it nullifies the point of the boss fight to begin with! Last but not least, the whole sound design of the game. I don't even have to talk so much, just listen to this poor excuse of a sound effect here. I don't know, as far as I can remember, the sound of this... ...doesn't sound anything like the sound of this. And do I really have to talk about the music?
<laughs> I am appalled beyond belief. Some renditions like Labyrinth Zone and Starlight are somewhat passable, but take Spring Yard Zone, it's atrocious! I really don't know what to say at this point. This game is awful, this is no surprise, but you know what's more surprising though? That there are so many different parts of this game that you can play right now instead of this track. And you know what? I'm gonna tell you all of them right now. In a song! The GBA port? What a serious shame. Let me show you version you should buy of this game! Genesis, Compilation, iOS, Radica, 6 Pack, Mega, Sonic Jump, Smash Pack, Sega, Ultimate, Classic, 3DS, XB Lite, Generation, Virtual Console! <laughs> you see? That's more than enough ports of this game you can play right now instead of this. Now, before I get any crazier, let's go on to the final card. How am I gonna do this one? <laughs> On the uh, positive side, uh, Sonic is still blue? <laughs> On the negative side, the limited visibility, the terrible physics, the random glitches, the slowdowns, it sounds like a freaking dying cat, the bosses are exploitable, the anniversary mode is pointless, and it just freaking sucks! It 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 sucks! I think it comes to no one's shock that this game sucks. But I will say this, I cannot call this game the worst Sonic game of all time because frankly, it's based on a classic and based on the original Sonic the Hedgehog. But what I can say wholeheartedly is that this is the worst part of a game I have ever played in my whole life. Even worse than Captain America and the Avengers. Click on the reviews right here. This gets a 1 out of 10! I'm being generous. I'm tired of this game, I'm tired! You know what, I can't do it, like, I'm sweating, I'm being angry right now. Just get some rest, I can't do this anymore. Ah! One extremely cheap transition later. <laughs> no! No, what you did, Sega, no! No! That shouldn't be! <laughs> Stop it! Why is everything so slow? <laughs> Stop that. Oh no! Everyone sounds slower than usual! No! Stop using the damn effects on my voice. Oh. Oh. Wait, why are you calling me? Um, you haven't been to work for the past few days, man. What's wrong? I'm sorry, man. It's just that there's this game that I played that's so bad. It's Sonic for the Game Boy Advance. I'm telling you, it's even worse than what we played of Captain America in the Avengers for the Super Nintendo. Oh, crap. Yeah, that game is so bad. I, I don't even want to talk about games anymore. There is no hope. But you do know you're holding a better port of the game, right? What are you talking about? Grab your cell phone. Grabbing. Pull it away from you and look at the screen. You're welcome. <laughs> Earlier this June, an updated port of Sonic 1 was released for iDevices and Androids, courtesy of Christian Whitehead, the guy behind the amazing Sonic CD HD port. Safe to say, this version is amazing. You get the full level select, widescreen support, refined graphics, time attack modes, and all the fixing. But what makes this version particularly amazing is that you can play as both Tails and Knuckles in Sonic 1. This has been a dream of mine ever since Sonic and Knuckles came out, and I got the lock on card and I was hoping I could play with Knuckles in Sonic 1 similar to Sonic 2, only to be disappointed by seeing Blue Sphere instead. Yeah, no way indeed. Playing 
both characters is really fun, but you can tell the game wasn't designed for them in mind, since you can just fly or glide over the entire levels, respectively. Labyrinth Zone is the only level that would impose challenge, albeit even that's minimal. The only reason why I cannot fully recommend this version is the controls. I don't play games on my phone for the reason that the virtual analog sticks are a pain to use. You can adjust the size of them, yeah, but... Even so, I always dislike how my thumb's covering bits of the screen. It's probably more tolerable on a tablet, but I really wish this was ported on consoles because this is amazing! This is the best port of the game so far, and did I also mention it's only $2.99? Yeah, if you have a phone and you're bored while waiting somewhere, totally get this game. So if you have an Android or any kind of an eye device, you'll definitely be better worth buying this version since it's only 3 bucks and you get a lot of content with it. As for the GBA version of Sonic 1... There is only one fit befitting of a game like this. I'll never ever play it again. You expect me to kind of burn the game or something, or you know, be like super angry and throw a tantrum? No, it's just a video game. It's an inanimate object, I mean, I don't care about it. I mean, man, there we go, it's not even in my hands anymore. <sighs> Thank you so much guys for joining me throughout this month and a half of Sonic, which apparently I reviewed the same game, but it still was very fun. So if you want to watch part one, right down here, part two is right down here. And I hope you enjoyed this little trilogy that I did, and of course, you know what would be fun? I think subscribing would be really cool if you did that too, yeah, right up there. And I'm gonna make more videos, of course, this coming September. We're gonna have a couple surprises that I'm preparing, and uh, thank you so much, guys, and take care. And, and please don't play this game. It's really bad. As much as I appreciate gaming, this just shows you how much developers can be lazy sometimes. So take care, guys. Blah.